Did you know that if you have 18 times 50, you could just halve the 18 and double the 50? Now you'll have an easier multiplication, nine times 100, which gives the same answer, 900. This is one of my favorite mathematics tricks. It's not only useful for mental math, but it can give us a deeper understanding of how multiplication works. The idea is that whenever we have a multiplication, we can halve one of the numbers and double the other, and we'll get exactly the same answer. But sometimes by doing this, we find ourselves with a much easier multiplication. Now, let's say we've got 14 times 50. That might be one that would normally have you reaching for the calculator, but let's try our technique. We're gonna halve the 14 and double the 50, so we'll end up with seven times 100 instead. It gives the same answer, but it's a calculation that many of us will probably find easier. Seven times 100 is 700, which means so is 14 times 50. Now, how did I know which one to halve and which one to double? Well, that comes down to experience. I spotted that 50 there, and knew that if I doubled it, I'd get 100, which is a notoriously cooperative candidate for multiplication. So then it made sense to halve the 14. Let's see another example. What about 33 times 20? Well, this time I'm gonna double the 33 and halve the 20. So I'll end up with 66 times 10. So the answer to both multiplications is 660. This time it was easier to spot which one I should halve because 33 is an odd number. If we halve an odd number, we're going to get a decimal, which doesn't use usually make our lives easier, whereas halving 20 will give us 10, another nice guy of multiplication. Now, the halving and doubling technique will always work, but it won't always make things easier. We're especially looking out for numbers that will halve or double to give us multiples of 10. They're always gonna be easier to multiply, but we can apply the technique more than once. Let's say we've got 25 times 16. If we double the 25 and halve the 16, we'll get 50 times eight. That's okay, but I think we can do better. If we double the 50 and half the 8 we'll get 100 times 4. Much better, but we don't have to stop there. We could double and half again to give 200 times 2. Hey, one more for luck, double and half again, 400 times 1. No one can argue with that, and the answer to all of these multiplications is 400. And that's what I love so much about this technique. It exposes how different multiplications are related to each other. So many of us just memorized our times tables as a bunch of individual facts, but when we see their connections, we begin to use numbers flexibly. First, we notice that four times five is the same as two times 10. Then we see that multiplying any number by five is the same as halving it and multiplying by 10 instead. These connections not only help us to calculate quickly, but they develop our mathematical thinking. They show us that there's often more than one way of doing things. They encourage us to find better ways of solving problems, which is endlessly useful, not only in maths, but in everyday life.